And the Bible says that she was standing on the moon. What was, her, what was on her head? A crown of 12 stars. So when John got the vision or the revelation, the Lord clothed the book of Revelation in code and symbols. So the Bible says that the woman was clothed with the sun. So if the woman, since the woman represents the church, it means then, and the sun represents righteousness, it means then that the church must be clothed with the righteousness of who? Of Jesus. And she was standing on the moon. Now, let's do some scientific action here now. The sun, the moon has no light of its own. You see, the revelation, when the revelation was written, it was not written for them. It is, was written for us who scientifically understand that the moon has no light of its own. Where does the moon get its light? The moon gets its light from the sun. So we're dealing with the church now. The church already clothed in the righteousness of Christ, standing on the moon. So now, the moon symbolizes the word. Because the word comes from who? From Christ himself. So now, let's break it down. So then the church symbolizes the woman, clothed with the righteousness of Christ, standing on the word of God. That's the church. And so then, what does she have on her head? She have a crown of how many stars? A crown of 12 stars. Therefore, let's go back now. Because we're going to get it plain now. The church must be clothed with the righteousness of Christ. Standing on the word of God. Preaching. The same message of the 12 apostles. Are you, 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 do you understand? That's the church. Anything less than that, let him be a curse. It's the same message that the apostle preach, the church of God must preach. No other message. As a matter of fact, in the book of Revelation chapter 10, when did the great disappointment came? The angel told John, say, go back. And prophesy again. He did not tell him to change anything. There was a disappointment. It was sweet in his mouth, bitter in his belly. Disappointed. But he was told, go back and preach the same message. So what next takes place in this great prophecy of God's church? The Bible says, and she being with ch child, cried, traveling in birth and pain to be delivered and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne so the Bible says a child is born into the church and we know this child was caught up to God's throne and we know so who is this baby who is the Destined to rule all nations. Who ascend to heaven. Bible says. And when he had spoken these things. While they beheld. He was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven. As he went up. Behold two men stood by them. In white apparel. So which also said. Ye men of Galilee. Why stand ye gazing up into heaven. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye see have seen him go into heaven. So who is this child that was caught up to God's throne? None other than Jesus Christ himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, uh, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations, 
and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness, of fierceness and wrath of the Almighty God, of Almighty God. And he had in his vessel, and he had on his vessel and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lords of Lords. So, friends, so let's look now what happened. The Bible says, as she was about to deliver, a great red dragon is next picture. So the question is, who is this dragon? And the Bible tells us, it's the devil himself. Revelation chapter 12, 7 to 9. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, and that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Those who rebelled in God's kingdom was cast out along with the devil. Where did he come from? This devil come from heaven. He was cast out of heaven. So the first place that sin ever committed was in heaven. That's in heaven where the devil accused God to be unjust. And there appear another wonder in heaven. Behold a great dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to de devour her child as soon as it was born. So now, there's something here I want to explain to you. How can the tail of the dragon draw the angels from heaven to earth? Now, like I told you before, the book of Revelation is written in code and symbol. So now, let's go to nature. Now, have you ever noticed the cat? When it's about to, to stalk a lizard or a mouse? What it does with its tail? It uses its tail to distract its prey, but it's not, the, the weapon is not in its tail. So now it uses its tail as a deception. So what the Bible wants to tell you now, this tail is a deceptive move that the devil uses to cast the, 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 the angels down to the earth. The angels were deceived through deception. You understand? So that's why the Bible says uses the tail to draw the angels down. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. That's, and the stars of heaven here are who? The angels. When the devil left heaven, whom did he bring with him? At the third part of the stars of heaven. When the devil left heaven, what did he try to do to the child? What? To devour her child as soon as it was born. Notice, notice what happened when Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. The villagers around, the women around, was saying that it was nothing like that. They were saying that she had intercourse or had a, a fear with somebody else. Okay? So now it is time for Joseph to go and pay his taxes. In Bethlehem. Because Augustus Caesar wants money to run his, his army. So what Augustus Caesar did? He said, everywhere you are, you must come to pay your taxes. So Joseph now, have Mary pregnant. He did not want to leave her by herself. Just in case 
she take in to have a baby, she would not have gotten the assistance. You following me? So he took her with him. And when they went to Bethlehem, that's where Jesus was born. But just before that, you have three magi who were studying the prophecies of Daniel. And they left from the east and came down. And the Bible said they were guided by the stars. But when I read the book of Desire Ages, Ellen White says that it was not the stars, but it was a company, a cluster of angels. And he came to Herod and said, where is he that is born? King of the Jews. Herod has just killed three of his sons because he felt that they were threat to his throne. He killed three of his sons and he killed his wife, Miriam. Go check your history. So when these men came to Herod and said, where is he that is born king of the Jews? King of the Jews in my kingdom. Go search diligently for this child. And when you have found him, bring me words that I too may go and worship him. Had not the angels came to these three wise men in a dream and told, him, told them not to go back that way. They would have gone to Herod and what would happen. But God always protect his own. And when Herod found out that day he has been tricked, he sent his soldiers out and said, kill everything from two years old. Because he thought that by doing so, he would get this young king caught up in that. But God, in a dream, through the angels, told Jesus, take the young child and his mother and flee. Where? Into Egypt, because Egypt had hosted the, the, the most uh, outside of Judea. Egypt had the biggest cluster of Jews. So you find that they were able to hide among the Jews. You understand? So therefore, God protect his child, protect his own, or else, the devil would like to, would want to devour the child, but he can't do that. What outstanding and extremely crucial facts are mentioned in Revelation chapter 12, 10 and 12. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God. How? Day and night. The devil does not sleep, friends. He has no night. The, night. the the night is like light to him. He does not sleep. And they overcome him by what? The blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. In other words, there's a saying that says, if you can't catch Harry, you catch him sure. So what happened when Christ ascended to heaven? Christ was out, the re, out of the reach of the devil. So the devil turns to the church and to the remnant of God's people. So therefore, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. He has a short time. And because he has a short time, the Pastor Paul classifies him as being he's like a roaring lion. The accuser is cast down. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb, the devil is angry because his time is short. And that's why he's trying to get as much people as he can. As much people 
not to confess their sins. As much people not to come to Jesus. Because if you don't come to Jesus, then therefore your sins cannot be forgiven. Because the Bible says all have sinned and have come short. So if you don't come to Jesus and confess your sins, those sins will not be forgiven. Because when those sins are confessed, Jesus takes the sin and Jesus places the sin on the originator of sin. And the originator of sin is the devil himself. So he doesn't want to bear your sin. Because if the sin is forgiven, he has to bear it. But if the sin is not forgiven, you have to bear it. So he'll do everything. Put every obstacle in your way. That you can create all the excuses that you want to excuse, create. Just to hinder or to prevent you from coming to Jesus. Amen? But don't care what he's saying. Come to Jesus. Jesus is always waiting with open arms for those. He that call upon Jesus, he will not refuse. Jesus will not refuse you. God's church persecuted. After Satan failed in destroying Jesus when he was here on earth, what did he do to do the woman our church? Bible tells us, and when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Notice what happened in the book of Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4. For when this fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, to redeem them that is under the law. That is including you and a woman brought forth one child. Using the prophetic rule of one prophet day equals one literal year. How long was this persecution to last? 1260 years. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place, the peer of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. In other words, the persecution was so heinous in Europe that a bunch of pilgrims came on the Mayflower across the ocean and came over to the new world. And they, they want to have a freedom of worship. And they said, they want a church without a pope and a government without a king. And upon this premise, the republic was established. And now we call it the United States of America. So, the devil persecuted them over there in, in Europe. You have the Albigenses. The Huguenots were persecuted. And they came over to the new world to, to worship. They want to worship freely. And for 1,200 and Six years, that begins in 538 AD when Justinian, the Emperor Justinian, leave Constantinople, come down to Rome, and give authority to Virgilius over heretics. And he became the head of the church in 538. And from 538 on through persecution of the church. So much so. That a bunch of them came over. But God still have his church to raise up. And from that he's going to raise his church. That will carry the end time message. So. And to the woman were given two wings. Of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness. Into her place where she is nourished for a time times and half a time from the face of the serpent. 
from the face of the devil. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Now, what we have to understand, that water is good, isn't it? We need water. We can't survive without water. But that same water can come in a destructive form. And when it comes in a destructive form, what we call it? Flood. So, the Bible is right in here for you to understand. So, let's go to the Bible. So, let's let the Bible now explain itself. In the book of Psalms 18 and verse 4, the Bible says that the sorrows of death compass me, and the floods of what? Floods of ungodly men made me afraid. So the flood here that the Bible is revelation is speaking of is the army that the Catholic Church sent out to destroy the woman, which is the church. And the Bible says that the, the, the land was able to help her. In, that, in other words, the land swallow up the flood. In other words, these same people was able to hid in caves and in mountains and hid from the armies of the, of, of the, of the, uh, of the Pope, from the armies as they tried to persecute these people. God, God protected them. What did the church do when this persecution began? And the woman fled into the wilderness. So you have men like Husk and Jerome, they have to hide. Whitcliffe, Swingling, Luther, all those great reformers were able to preach and teach the people. Back to the Bible. Because back there then, you could only listen to what the priest said, what the Pope said. You dare have a Bible in your home. You would be taken and you would be put at the stake. And you would be burned. And you would be called a heretic. For even having the word of... Now we have the word of God so freely. And we don't even want to read it. <laughs> but there people will die for it. They will, take, they will take scriptures. Pieces of scriptures. And open their garments. And sew it into their garments. They will take pieces of the scriptures and they will recite it and learn it. Practice. It was precious to them. So, God's remnant, last day church. Revelation 12, 17 says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandment of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So look at the symbol of Revelation 12, 17. Explain, dragon, the devil, woman, true church, remnant, last day or end time, commandments, the decalogue, testimony of Jesus, the gift of prophecy. So the true church must have the gift of prophecy. The true church must be obedient to God's ten commandments. And the true church would preach end time message. Now let's put the reverse of Revelation 12, 17 in today's language. And the dragon was infuriated with the true church, and went to fight against God's church in the very last days, which keep the Ten Commandments and has the gift of prophecy. That's the characteristics of the two church. Two things that stands out. With the they will keep God's commandment, and they will have the gift of prophecy. Now I will say this. We don't know hitch. The Seventh-day Adventist Church 
is the church that will explain the book of Revelation and the book of Daniel. The best. The commandment keeping people will always able, they will have the gift of prophecy. What two characteristics of God's last day remnant church are mentioned in Revelation 12? The two characteristics are they keep the commandments and have the gift of prophecy. These are the two that this church, God has given this to this church. That is why when, in the, I will repeat again, in Revelation chapter 10, when he, John was told, come and take this little book and eat it. But I'll tell you this, when you eat this book, it's going to be sweet in your mouth. And it's going to be bitter in your belly. But he did it. He did eat it. It was sweet in his mouth. And it was bitter in his belly. And the angel told him, you must prophesy again. To kings and nations and tongues and people. Same message. Our message does not change. God's message does not change. It's the message that changed us. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren, and that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I'm not, it doesn't, this didn't come from me. That's Bible. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. Three special messages. The great points in proclaiming to all the world the everlasting gospel in these last days. Jesus assigns. Three great points in proclaiming to all the world the everlasting gospel in these last days. So, point no, so what are these three great points? Bible says, the hour of his judgment is come. Worship him which made heaven and earth. Point number one. Point number two, Babylon is falling. Come out of her, my people. Point number three, beware of the beast and his image and his mark. And I guarantee you we're going to be doing this on Wednesday evening. You can't miss it. You have to be here on time. Because if you are not here on time and you don't get started with it, you might miss some things. So be here before seven. That we can, when we start, and for those who are watching online, we're going to be online at 7 o'clock. And that's going to be next Wednesday on the mark of the beast. What other key point will God's true church for the last day stretch? And they overcome, overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. God's church identified. According to Revelation 12 and verse 14, the following seven great points identify God's church for today, into which he is calling all his people God's church. And notice what happened. Jesus says, other sheep I have. Other sheep. But the, these sheep has to come where you're going to be one fold and one shepherd. So, these are some of the characteristics of God's church. God's church, one, will appear after the wilderness dark ages experience. That is, after 1798. Because 1,260 years ends at 1798. Because if you add 1,260 to 538, you get 1798. And it was 1798 
that Pope Pius VI was arrested. He was arrested. Napoleon Bonaparte sent his brother Berthier and arrested the Pope because the Pope did not support him in his government. He was a dictator and the Pope did not support him in that. So he sent his brother to arrest Pope Pius VI and he died in exile six months later. Will hold the same truths as the apostles, you remember? The woman had a crown of 12 stars on her head. Will teach grace with the Bible. In other, the same truths that the apostles preach, the end time God's end time church must preach it. Will keep the Ten Commandments, including the fourth or the seven day Sabbath. Will have the gift of prophecy. That's God's church. We'll preach the final end time three point message, message of Revelation chapter 14, 6 to 12. We'll be a worldwide missionary church to every nation, tongue, and people. Now, I'm not here to put down any church. That's not my reason. But my reason is sometimes we have to use some common sense. Based on what the Bible says, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. It means then that there has to be a church. The true church must ex exist all, all, all over the world. So if you only have one church, your church, and it's only at the corner, and you're not over on there, how are you going to get the message? How your church is going to present the message? So the church, the true church of God, must extend all over the world. As a matter of fact, the Seventh-day Adventist church is now ex exists in over 200 countries. Amen? Over the world. Now, if I take a quarterly, I travel a lot, and I travel to this country, it's the same message. Anywhere I go, it's the same message. Sometimes the language changes. Went to Kenya. They're teaching the Sabbath school lesson, the same lesson, but they're teaching it in Swahili. It's the same thing. I only have it in English. So the Advent message is in just about every language. Amen? Amen? So it must be a worldwide church. We'll teach salvation through Jesus Christ, the everlasting gospel. Jesus hands you these seven specifications and say, go find my church. Jesus hands you these seven specifications, those who are watching online. And the question is, what does he promise when we seek? Bible says, and I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. This is what Jesus said. How many church organizations in the world fit these seven points? Only one. Only one. One church. Once. One recogni once one recognized God's true church, is it necessary to become a member? Once you recognize and identify, because God, you're listening tonight, and whatever you hear, God is going to hold you responsible for what you hear. Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. And I said, Amen. God is adding to his, to his church because the reason why he has to add to his church, he's making up his jewels. And he's making up his jewels. He don't want to leave you. Come this Sabbath, 
We're going to have an, we'll be having a baptism, a baptism right here. There will be a baptism right here. So if you feel that you're watching and you're convinced and convicted through the word of God, the words are not mine. Everything that I present to you, I present to you from the word of God. Come on down. Speak with the pastor. Call him. Get yourself prepared. Let me tell you this. If I was not a Christian, I would be a Christian. You know why? There's no guarantee of you leaving your house and come back. There's no guarantee to leave your house these days and to come back. It's not a surety. It's only the grace of God that keeps you. But just prevent you. You might fall in that category of your life snatched away from you. Your life now is being hidden with Christ. Amen? So we have in a baptism this week. This Sabbath, come on down and give your life to the Lord. Amen. So we are all called into one body. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. To the which also ye are called into one body. And be ye thankful. Amen. And he is the head of the body. The church. Who is the beginning. The firstborn from the dead. That in all things. He might have. The preeminence. We have to understand that God provides food for you. He provides clothes for you. He provides a job for you. And you're not giving, returning yourself to him. If you have a husband, and he's doing all these things for you, and you're not doing anything for him, do you think he would like it? But God... Provides food. He provides job. He provides a roof over your head. He provides clothing on your back. Shoes. So much so, when Sabbath morning come, you have to be moving over your closet. And what you're going to wear? You're a long week and you're still saying what you're going to wear. God provides, man. Because before then, you only have two. One this Sabbath, and one the other Sabbath. God good, man. I can speak of it because I experience his goodness. Amen. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether you Jamaican, whether you're Trinidad, Trinidadian, whether you are Jew or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit or from one fountain, which is Jesus Christ. It is just as imperative to enter God's ark of our church today as it was to enter the ark in Noah's day. So as not God provides an ark, back in Noah's day, he has now provided his church. Church is a place of safety. Because he leaves a church, and he's coming back for a church. He's not coming back for Noah's ark. Even though that was a place of safety, he's coming back for a church. Revelation chapter 1 Revelation 20, verse 1, 12, 13, and 20. Picture Jesus walking among his church. He will walk among the churches today. The churches today. Calling his people. As he speaks to you and calls you into his blessed ark of safety for these last days. Will you respond to his loving call? You are very precious to him. 
and because you are precious to him. That's why he sends this message. I'm only a spokesperson for him. He tells me to tell you. I am only doing that because I'm being obedient to his command. Won't you obedient to his calling? Since I am obedient to his command, why not be obedient to his calling? Why not obedient to his message that he sends to you? Friends, we know that when Christ, regardless of what you're going through, but we know that when Christ is in the vessel, we can smile at any storm from whatever angle it will blow. What a mighty God we serve. So, friends, I have tomorrow night. You cannot miss this one. It's the mark of the beast. We're going to try to identify what the beast is, what its mark is, so you cannot miss tomorrow night. So may God bless you and may God keep you as we come to the close of tonight's presentation. I hope that you have learned something. Amen? All right. I hope you learned something. And I hope that what you learn, you share it. Share the link with someone else, a friend, that they may also watch it. You can go back if you don't understand something and watch it to see and get the full knowledge of what is being presented here tonight. Amen. May God bless you and keep you until Wednesday night. Be safe. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Elder Griffith, for the message. We're going to stand. We're going to sing hymn number 595, which is our theme song. Let every lamp be burning bright. The darkest hour is nearing. Let every lamp be burning bright, the darkest hour is nearing, the darkest hour of earth's long night before the Lord's appearing. Then trim your lamps, my brethren dear, then trim your lamps with godly fear, the Master's coming, draweth near, let every lamp be burning. Father in heaven, we've heard your words. We pray, God, that we will impart it into our lives. And, Father, that we'll bear good fruits for you. Continue to bless us, continue to guide us as we journey on our way home. We ask a special protection over Elder Griffiths. We pray, God, that you'll travel with him as he journey back home. But, Father, that you'll keep him safe, keep him protected. Put an edge of protection around his family, Lord. I pray that as he do your work, that you'll grant him blessing abundantly. Thank you, Lord, for taking every one of us here safely. Take us home safely now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good night, everyone. <laughs>